you are not yet leveraging your breathing for optimal performance, you are missing out on the most powerful way to unlock your body's full potential. I can promise you that the lessons I'm about to impart were among the initial teachings Ayano Koji received in the White Room. In this video, you will learn about the fastest, scientifically proven way to physiologically reduce your levels of stress. Just imagine having an imaginary switch in your mind. So the next time you're about to hold a presentation or have a difficult conversation, you will stay unfazed. But that is not all. You are also going to learn how to finally stop overbreathing. You heard right? Most people actually breathe far too much. This begs two questions. Are you part of the majority in overbreathe? And if yes, how can you fix this? So first, let's do a quick test to see your carbon dioxide tolerance, which enables us to see how well you can control your breathing at the mechanical, as well as the chemical level. First, sit down. When I say inhale, you're going to inhale as deeply as you can through your nose. Then a timer will show up, and when the timer starts, you are going to exhale through your mouth as slowly as possible. And note when your lungs are completely empty. Remember that holding your breath with empty lungs doesn't count? Okay, inhale as deep as you can. If it took you 20 seconds or less to expel all your air, we can say that you have a relatively low carbon dioxide tolerance. If it took you somewhere between 25 and 40 seconds to expel all your air, then you have a moderate level of carbon dioxide tolerance. And if you were able to control that exhale for longer, you have a high carbon dioxide tolerance. There are two important things to note before we talk about how to use the information you just gained. First, none of this has to do with cardiovascular fitness level, at least not in any kind of direct way. It just means you don't have, or you have not yet, developed neuromechanical control of the diaphragm. Also, if you wanted to be sure of your results, you can go back and try the test again to verify. Now let's come back to the test results. If you're in the low category, note down the number 3. If you're in the medium bracket, note down 5 to 6. And if you have a long carbon dioxide discard rate, then note down 8 to 10. The number you just wrote down will give you a guideline how to perform the exercise box breathing. Do box breathing even just once or twice a week for a few minutes and you will greatly improve your efficiency of breathing and shift yourself away from overbreathing when at rest, even if you're not consciously thinking about it. Box breathing involves equal duration phases of inhaling, holding, exhaling, and holding again. The specific duration for each phase is decided by the number you wrote down in seconds. What you will notice is that after doing this breathing exercise once or twice a week for two or three weeks, the box breathing itself becomes very easy. And in that case, I recommend taking the carbon dioxide tolerance test over again and readjusting the duration number. Now let's talk about the fastest, scientifically proven way to physiologically reduce your levels of stress. You can do this exercise whenever and wherever you need and the best part is, it only takes a few seconds. The exercise is called physiological sigh. You inhale through the nose as deeply as you can, then you do a second sharp inhale immediately afterward to try and maximally inflate the lungs, followed by a slow exhalation through the mouth. Try it out right now. The breathing pattern you are doing at present acts as a quick regulator, shifting the autonomic nervous system from a state of heightened arousal to a more balanced and calmer state. The benefits are even greater if you perform cyclic sighing for the duration of five minutes. Then you experience the stress reduction, not just during the practice, but the whole 24-hour cycle. However, stress reduction is not the only use of the physiological sigh. The point I am going to talk about now is particularly important for those who use an electronic device for learning or reading purposes, so basically everyone. We actually naturally do the physiological sigh roughly every five minutes. You might think you never breathe like that, but you do, unless there is something severely wrong with your brainstem. Here comes the astonishing part. Reading on a smartphone suppresses physiological sighing. Why this happens is not 100% clear, but there seems to be a mechanism whereby when we tighten our visual window, like when we look at a smartphone, we somehow suppress the activity of neurons in the parafacial nucleus that generate these physiological sighs. As a consequence, the brain is not getting enough oxygen and is not offloading enough carbon dioxide, which obviously impairs your mental functions. So if you are reading on a tablet, but in particular on a smartphone, remind yourself to regularly engage in a physiological sigh. As you know, I try to design my videos in a way that makes you finish the video as a more educated person. 
So let's test your knowledge on an incredibly important topic and if necessary expand it with a short lesson, which will have practical uses and help you gain more control over your body. Do you know why the physiological sigh you just did made you calmer? The same mechanism is leveraged in every single breathing technique, you know? The physiological sigh makes you calmer because the duration of the exhalation is longer than the duration of the inhalation. This slows down your heart rate because when you exhale, your diaphragm moves up and you compact the heart. Yes, you actually reduce the volume of your heart. The smaller volume of your heart leads to accelerated blood flow, which in turn makes your nervous system send a signal to slow the heart down. The opposite happens when you inhale. Understanding this relationship between inhales, exhales, and your heart rate is the key to gain more control over your body. A way to add a boost to these breathing techniques is to visualize whatever the breathing should achieve. If you do long exhalations to calm yourself, at the same time also consciously feel your diaphragm moving up and compacting your heart. Visualize how your heart starts to slow down. The power of visualizations and breathing patterns are both undeniable. Through the daily practice of a combination of these two, you can gain control over your body and mind akin to Ayano Koji, even as a real person.